Good evening and welcome to Omni Bros Live. I'm Omni Dog from Omni Dog's Vault, and you are watching. Oh, I already said it. Omni Bros Live, and I'm joined by a week in geekdoms. Geo, Geo, how you doing, brother? Pretty well, Jess. I am happy to be here and happy to uh, be on this show with everybody in the chat and everybody watching later on, pre-recorded. Happy to be here. I'm happy to be here too. And you know who's also happy? The people mm -hmm. at In Stock Trades, they're genuinely always happy. They seem to be happy to me. And I'm always happy to order from them because you can get your collected editions up to 50% off there. Loyalty mm -hmm. discounts add 2% to that. There's bound to be an Omnibros Live code coming up here because this is June. It's the end of the quarter. So or beginning of some other quarter. I think it's the end of the quarter that we care about. So there's going to yep. be an Omni Bros Live code, I predict. If you live in the United States, you order $50 or more in an order, you get free shipping. Fabulous service. Fabulous packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. Nice. Okay. So nicely done. Thank you, buddy. Uh, thank you, Mutant Menace. Uh, you've already had a chance to watch it. Good. I did a new video on out of print books, and um, I just posted it like half an hour ago. You've There's, been on a roll, sir. I, I know. I don't know. Sometimes <laughs> I just get on. I just get on rolls. Uh, I go for like two weeks, and I'm just like, I don't have the energy. And then I just all of a sudden I find the energy. Okay, let's make some videos. And there's Gabe from Gabe Infinity Watch. What's up, brother? What's up, fellas? How's it going? Doing well. I'm getting stuff put together here. How's it going? Good to see you, Jill. Hey, Gabe. Good to see you, Doing Jess. Well. Good to see everybody in the chat, all the super cool people in the chat visiting us today. Thanks for dropping in. Mm -hmm. Lots of good stuff to talk about today, especially if you like big ass halls. Yeah, I got a gigunda haul. <laughs> I like big ass halls, and I cannot lie. <laughs> Hasselhoff, <laughs> oh god, you're such. A, did you come over on the Mayflower, Kristen? You're That's such all right, a man. Throw off, throw off that gray, that gray bush on your chest. Man. What good. are you, a Puritan, Kristen? What's going on? I mean, this is like my golf shirt. <laughs> Do you button that up anymore? You got, never mind. I, I was going to say something inappropriate. I, oh. Now you look like some hipster. This top button on this polo shirt. <laughs> Hasselhoff, how dare you? You can join a convent if you open if you button that top button. <laughs> Speaking of people who like to fuck nuns, hey, what's up, Omar? Hey, I think I'm a Catholic school. <laughs> Catholic schools was the best part of my childhood. What's up, everybody? Sorry, I'm late. There Amen. is the uncanny Omar. How's it going, buddy? It's going good. How's everybody doing tonight? Doing well. Good. good. We've already finished with Hall's previews and reads, so we're actually wow. getting ready to finish the show. That's some <laughs> bullshit, if I've ever heard any. Hmm. Yeah, there's no way we're gonna be. We, we could have gotten through all these Hall in seven minutes. Have you even done the little in stock thing yet? I did. Yes. Okay. I, I did start off with that. I believe that. Okay. Oh, you did. Oh, you did the promo this time. I did the promo this time. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't get distracted by dog biting stories like yesterday. <laughs> uh, Lionheart, thank you. Yeah, you'll see it again tonight when uh, because I haven't hauled live on this show in a while. Yeah, dude, you got a big ass haul, man. I got a big ass haul. I'm pretty sure Omar does because I know his uh, DCBS order came in recently. Um, you, now, Gabe, uh, did you find the thing I was de uh, definitely going to hate? Yeah, I found it. Oh, good. Yeah, I found nice. it. Nice. I can't wait to see it. I did get probably the biggest book I have now in my possession from Marvel. It's a book that comes out in August. Oh, and you got it ahead of everybody. I could show you. I think Gabe already has one of these, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't know how big these damn things were. Is it herpes? You no. Know. <laughs> Marvel, Marvel did not give me that. I got that from DC cancellations. No, you got that from the, the Blackest Night on the bus, not having a table of contents. 
Oh, those books haven't had a table of contents in years, though. <laughs> That's a little. At least they printed everything in the right order. <laughs> at least, at least it came out. Yeah. Until, until I go over, uh, until I get to about to reading it a year from now, and I'm like, oh shit, they're missing five pages. Because <laughs> I mean, that's such a thick book, right? Who who sits there and, and opens it up and starts reading it right away? Uh, homeboy did the uh, deluxe hardcover on Instagram. Did he read deluxe, it or did he just do an edition. overview? I don't know. I know that he does a lot of overviews too. That dude's I'm, that dude's on a different level. I love his videos. I love his videos. He he's so awesome at uh, making all those overviews. Yeah, he made a, uh, he made a table of contents too. He went through yeah, that. Yeah, that, that was incredible. I saw that video. Yeah, and I always comment. I'm like, no wonder it takes you like two months to make a video because like just phenomenal. It's, like puts us to shame. Oh, it doesn't or, take much to put mine to shame. Mine oh, is just stop. straight to video. Stop. I'm just like, so hey, I'm on the air right now. Okay, that's the end of my video. Hey, everybody, look at my chest hair. <laughs> <laughs> Till Kristen calls me out on it. <laughs> oh, were you sporting some chest hair? I was, and Kristen <laughs> made me button it up. It was getting very late 70s, early 80s in here. You had a gold medallion. <laughs> did, you, did you tell Kristen to keep her eyes up here? I said, Kristen <laughs> came over on the Mayflower. She's such a Puritan. <laughs> so uh, what's going on with your headphones? They they seem to be changing colors. Is that, are they uh, are they disco headphones? What's going on with them, uh, uh, Omar Arena? Uh, I don't know. I'm trying out new headphones. They're fancy. They're, uh, they're new ones that I got from uh, work. So cool. they... They seem to be okay. They're already changing color. Oh, that's they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you guys hear me okay though? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Changing no problem. Color. Yeah, uh, you're good, dude. You're good. That is dumb. Uh, I don't know why they do that. So. Because you're a hipster. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> you're a self-denying hipster. Mm, no, not even that. So, what kind of hauls did you guys get? Who said that they had the massive haul? Was that Gabe? Gabe had a massive haul. I, I got that. a pretty big haul. Uh, I know Jess has got a huge haul. His haul took big two haul. pictures on our Instagram. Took up two pictures to post that that whole thing up. So, okay. let's see what Jess got. Jess got some cool shit. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. I'll Stuff. go. Um First, we have a uh, celebrity couple. Uh, I don't know if they're both in the chat. <laughs> no one else is sporting cleavage. That's all I'm saying, says Kristen. I wasn't sporting cleavage. Give Whoa. me a second. We could change this up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> now you're daring Gabe. <laughs> I didn't uh, know it was a contest. Yeah. We have um, a celebrity comics couple in the group, and that is Reed Chancellor and Kristen Robertson. Mm -hmm. and I refer to them as uh, Reedston. Chris, Ooh. Chris, uh, yeah, Reedston. And uh, this is Reed Chancellor's book, Hardcore Anxiety, a graphic guide to punk rock and mental health. I just got it today. And I paid for it a while ago. And this is Reed's uh, own book about how punk rock um, has helped him deal with his anxiety and his mental health issues. And while dealing with uh, punk's roots and from the 70s and how, uh, dealing with it, um, Punk movements from the 70s till today, small towns and stadiums, yabba -de yabba -de, through mental illness in Evansville, Indiana, this stunning nonfiction graphic novel give punks the most important advice of all. You aren't alone. You're going to make it through alive. And it features Kristen in this book somewhere. I haven't, maybe that's her. Look for the look for the uh, the the Protestant superior one that taught me the pun of Oh, that's cool. Maybe uh, makes a cat. I, I think that the is her. Cat? I think that is her. It says, when she came to see me play and uh, we started dating. Oh, I think this might be Kristen here. Uh -oh. I hope so. The jig is up. Yeah. So he was. If it's, uh, if it's not, then Reed might be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Reed, I had him on my show um, when I did the punk rock show, and 
Oh, that's not you? Awkward. <laughs> oh, dear. It's not Kristen. Okay. Well, Kristen must come later because they're married now. So, uh, well, you know the book better than I do, Kristen. Where do you show up in it? So, so this is nonfiction then? It is nonfiction, yeah. So, where yeah. Get, where did you get it? I got it from microcosm.publications, microcosm.pub. And okay. uh, it came today with a slew of extras. And um, it's uh, it's really cool. He was a good guy. I had him on my show with uh, Steve from Third Eye Comics. We talked about punk rock and punk rock and comics and punk rock in general. And Kristen just put up um, the link for it and uh, for Microcosm Publishing. And um, where is Kristen in this? Oh, no, there's him with oh. his therapist. So oh, like him talking about Husker Du. I don't know. I'm gonna have to. I want to read this this week, so I'll give you a full. I'll give you a full takedown next week, where she is. I'm toward the end. Okay. Well, we'll. I'll give it a full read through, and um, and give a report on it uh, when I go over my reads for next week. Um, let's see. I also hauled Saga Volume Three. Nice. I see that is in the same condition mine is. <laughs> Still in the wrapping. Sealed. Yeah, just in <laughs> case water starts leaking on it. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have that Amazon uh, touch to it at all. <laughs> like some uh, people post it up in the group. Matador. This is an image book. I got it by Devin Grayson and Brian Stelfries. Uh, Stelfries is amazing. That guy does great work. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad he's still around. Yeah. So I was happy getting this. This is this was just a um uh I saw it, kind of grabbed it. This is a, of course every Omar's do favorite. Like, do you what? like Devin Grayson? Uh yeah. You do? Okay. I know she said it missed with some people. Some people really hated her nightwing run. Other um I think I, I read you I read user and liked it, but I don't think I read her nightwing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I read user though. Well, you know, some people can't write superhero comics. It's okay. Like there's a there's a lot of independent writers that can't pull it, you know, their weight in superheroes. I think it's a different kind of mentality when you're writing superhero books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which brings us to the next uh, book by Brian Michael Bendis called Cover, uh, Volume One. It's a Jinx World book. Um, discover the incredible true sort of story com about a comic book spy. Uh, anyway, I like his um, Jinx World stuff, so I decided to give this to go. And it's got David Mack art, which I don't think can be beat. So, nope. yeah. Beautiful Dave's art. a fan, too. And based on Omar's recommendation, Death or Glory? Yeah, right. solid. Solid read. Oh, that's a recommender yeah. book, right? Right. You know, yeah, I was gonna say you didn't need my recommendation. That's a remender book. I know, but I don't. I don't think I would have picked it up. I would have waited forever for some kind of oversized my, hard. My wife is walking up and down the stairs, making fun of us. She's going like this. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife's doing. I don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks that's what we do. <laughs> we're in a circle you talk about important things all right <laughs> welcome to circle jerk bros everybody <laughs> that's hilarious. actually it wouldn't surprise her <laughs> that's hilarious uh i think omar you had these in your hall last time too so i decided yeah. to get these because i like becky clunan yeah <laughs> now did you ever end up reading uh what was what, what is she known for oh uh, slip of the tongue now. I can't remember. Shit. Who wrote uh, Gotham Academy? Who was that, Gabe? Uh, uh, Carl Kershaw did the uh, the art. Art. Mm -hmm. But who was the uh, art? Uh, Fletcher. Fletcher did Fletcher. it. Fletcher. That's who it was. Sorry, I got too confused. Carry on, Jess. Okay. Um. Then I got Flash by my boy Wark Wark Made, uh, mm. Volume Six, also Cancel. known as Mark Wade. Volume seven canceled. Just bought volume six. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> End of the road. That's the way it goes for old Braggadocia. Middle West by Scotty Young. Hey now. 
I love that Corona. Hey, okay. hey now. Hey now. Hey. Or, or hey, Corona is awesome on that. Book. He is very awesome. Have you read this? I, I read it uh, when it came out on Saturday. It I, I have full of issues awesome. here and there. It's great, but I haven't gotten into it deep yet. It's um, up in my read pile. His art is very reminiscent of Scotty Young when he was uh, in that in between period when he was doing new X Men and trying out new things, less cartoony, more sketchy. Yeah. That's what it looks like, and I really dig it. And the story's fun. I, I liked it. Yeah, it's up in my to-read pile, so I brought it down for this. Also in my to-read pile is The Old Guard yeah. by Greg Rucka. Is this something you've read? Uh, No, but Maddie and Amanda have both read it, so I'm okay. going to review it. Okay, yeah, and Faria also read it and recommended it. Um. And this is a Kickstarter book that I ordered so long ago that I don't remember what it's about. Atlanta wasn't built for tourists. It sounded good at the time, but I, it was a year ago, I think, that I ordered it. So I don't know. We'll have to read it and figure it out. It sounded really good, though. Uh, Blackbird. It's a magic, yeah. magic you, bird. What? You showed that off last week, I think. I did? Okay. No, we, didn't do, we didn't do hauls last week. We had an interview last week. I, I saw the art. I okay. remember looking at the art because you, you sold me on it. I was like, oh, that looks beautiful. I got to get possible. it. possible. I may have talked about Atlantis already. Did I talk about the Woods yearbook uh, edition? Yes. Yep. You did? Okay. Yeah, I guess you did. Okay. Uh, how about Black Mirror Absolute? That's new. Mm, That's new. That's new. And it's really? incredible. Yeah. This is incredible. I <laughs> I went on to see what people's reaction were was about this book, and I went on to Goodreads, and I won't say who it was because I can't remember mostly, but the guy on Goodreads said, yeah, I got this absolute, and everything was great about it except for the art. Uh, I don't like Jock's art or Frank Avila's art, and I'm like... I can, I can see people not digging it. But why you would know? you get the absolute then if you don't like John, Jock or Frank Avila? I mean, that's, that's the main reason. Yeah. Dude, yeah. There, there, how many people on average do you think, like, let's do statistically speaking, how many people in the group do you think buy an absolute without knowing any of the content? <laughs> uh, 3%. I would yeah. say at least 50%. At, really? Um, yeah, yeah, between 4 and 50 it, there's there is a lot of people that buy these things that have no idea what they're going in for, and then then they read it like five years later and like, yeah, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> or holy shit, all my pages are stuck together. Right, right, which would huh. suck. But um, acquired taste, man. I, I know a lot of people had problems with his losers. I remember, but I really like his. Uh, well, he doesn't do much interior art anymore, right? He just does a bunch of covers most of the time. This is Jock? Yeah. yeah Speaking of losers, think... uh, shout out real quick to Andy Diggle. He's got some family thing that's going on, too. My heart goes out to that guy and his family. Yeah. Um, let's see. Did I talk about Yuzagi Ojimbo? I Eight? think you did. God or maybe I saw your video haul. No, you know what? I saw your video haul. And oh, my, my, oh my! Just mixing everything just, up, man. We I'm put out the too. Chest we, chest we put out so much content that I forget. I, I know I disliked the video. I did do that. <laughs> that's only fair. We all dislike your video. That's okay. That's what. Oddly enough, there's six people that dislike my videos. There's six of you assholes, including myself. <laughs> okay, so I got Yuzagi Ujimbo eight, a book I've been waiting for forever. Black Magic. The Lux. How much uh -huh. longer are you going to wait to open that? That is up was up on my to read pile, so it's getting Ooh. read this week. Um, that's going to get bumped down by the gin. That's for sure. That is. <laughs> <laughs> Gin's getting read this week too. Gin's getting read tonight after my wife goes to bed. I'm going to drink some gin tonight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing Spider Man number four. Uh, yeah. I saw an overview. I saw an overview of that. Um, right, right? Uh, yeah, I did do an overview. See? I watch your shit. Yeah, I watch your shit, too. I know you did an overview, too. <laughs> <laughs> You're competing. I know. I'm like, geez. Well, you, you, you went with the old school cover, though. I didn't. I went with the Frank Cho cover. See? Gross. Right. Gross. No one says gross to Frank Cho. Exactly. Really? Uh, I like that Frank Cho cover. Some people uh, don't, but I liked it. Gross. 
I think John Romita. It's an odd cover that they went for, though. I thought so, too. There were so many classics they could have gone with, and they chose that cover. I'm assuming Uh, 121 and 122 are probably overused. Maybe that was the reason. I don't don't know. This is an odd choice. They could have used 129 even, but Mm -hmm. maybe that's overused, but... Then that's, uh, a pun- then that's a Punisher book, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's I true. Know. I think it's because Tarantula is on the cover. Speculations begin now. Tarantula is the next villain in Spider-Man. Very. He's gonna far take the man- He's gonna take oh. the mantle after Peter Parker dies in the movies. Maybe Omar could find out because that Hulk omnibus has got a terrible cover too. The Peter uh, David. One. I I assume the Hulk omnibus was used because it's wait the Peter David one. Yes, the Peter David one. You're not talking about the DM cover, right? Uh, I'm talking about the not Todd McFarlane cover. The one that we're not buying? <laughs> the one that's just, just the Hulk and Shadow and uh, amongst the rump, rubble. I think uh, it's like 335, three, whatever the cover is. 333. From. Yeah. 333. Yep. Yeah. Yep. What, a, what a terrible cover for that. I don't know who was there, man. Whoever chose it. I would have gone with... I think, you know, I, I honestly, I wouldn't have chosen 340 because that's... that's Wolverine. It's a Wolverine cover. Right. Yeah. 345 <laughs> is perfect. But the, then, one, the one they're using is perfect. Yeah, I think it's a great, great cover. But there are other iconic covers from McFarland's run. Or even Eric Larson. Or Sam K- but anyway, you know what? Not my department, so somebody else made that call. Yeah. <laughs> not my circus, not my monkeys. So <laughs> all I know is I'm going to be hitting F5 to get that damn freaking 345 omnibus. Because I see that going the way of Conan. Ah. And when is that coming out? As a matter of fact, yeah, actually, you actually, might know something about that. Actually, if you want to know details, tune into Near Me Condition tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Oh, I have hmm. I I was told I could release it tomorrow. They just need one more go ahead and let me know. It's uh, it's the advanced uh, September previews. So I think it goes live for everybody on June 21st. But we were given early access, so I was just gonna go through it, and that has all the I will tell you guys this much because I love you all. Uh, Annihilation and Daredevil reprints are the exact same price as when they came out. They did not go up in price. Nice. I'll, say, I'll say that much. Unlike this Terry Moore on the bus, everybody's going over. Well, that only went up, what, 25 bucks, right? Well, the shipping is going to be the issue mm-hmm. that's gone up so much, which is the tariffs. That's the issue. Uh, okay, so then we get to the Kyle pile. I'm still not done yet. <laughs> we got a Kyle pile. Oh, that's, that's, what, that's, what, that's what I call it. You've been watching my videos. <laughs> I have not. Liar. Kyle. Liar. All right, go ahead. I don't. Uh, okay, well, I only watch when uh, Amanda and Maddie are on. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> You're a smart man, that's why. Yeah, that was the best choice Omar ever made on his channel. <laughs> <laughs> Our buddy Kyle sent me, uh, over the past two weeks, quite a stack, uh, starting with Orphans, Volume 1. This is looking a little manga-ishy to me, but that's not going to keep me from reading it, because it reads in the proper order. In that's the right. proper order. Listen Pro- to wow. That Damn. way to this way. Wow. And I, my brain can handle it. Here's another one that's looking a little manga she to me, Hap Haven. Oh, yeah. Uh, it looks a little manga she, but it's okay. Man. And Plume Omnibus from Devil's Due Comics. Have you looked through this? I, I was looking through it too. It looks freaking awesome. I think it looks great. Yeah. I'm really excited about this one. It looks like it's going to be a fast read, despite of the page count. Just, right. uh, just flipping through a little bit. I didn't go through too much, but you know, I've never heard of this. Have you? No. No. That's no. what's great about these books is I have barely right. even the ones with the famous writers. I haven't heard of them. Yeah, I had no idea about Shipwreck from Warren Ellis. I also got that. That's Shipwreck upstairs. Did you guys go? No, not that guy with the parrot. This is an aftershock comic. Aftershock is killing it, and we don't really talk about it much because I don't. I mean, I really, I know Jess has talked about him in the past, but I mean, they got some big names over there. Yeah. So uh, it's Warren Ellis. Actually, so, yeah. yeah, I did haul that book, and that's upstairs still in the to read pile. Um, I forgot to bring it down. Uh, the Warning, Volume right. One. 
I read that. Actually, Amanda and I just reviewed it. Oh, you did? Um, mm-hmm. It's going... We'll probably make it live sometime this week. It's, uh... Do you like Terrence Malick films? The guy that did uh, Thin Red Line. Uh, you know I'm about? Like, um... Tree, he, uh, Tree of Life. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I did read this, and I decided to wait till Volume 2 comes out to review it, because I don't think there was enough in this it's, it's for me a, to review. It pick, it's a slow read, but it picks yeah. up, like, issue five picks up, and I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, this is, I'm in. This is pretty cool. So, reread it. I think it's re- worth it, rereading it. <laughs> Dave K. just created Kyle to make it seem he's not buying as much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Omar and I created Kyle to pretend that we're not buying as much stuff. Uh, it's like a John Hom <laughs> protocol all over again. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody really <laughs> likes us that much. That's right. Infinite Dark Volume One. This one looks really good to me. Yeah. Ryan, Katie, Andrea, Muti. Ah, this one looks really good. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I can get a lot of reading done this week because I am going to be flat on my back for half of the week, and I want really want to use that time well. It's a Rick Remender book, Devolution. And I had never heard of this, even though it's a remember 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 book. That's Here. the one from uh, Dynamite, right? Yeah, yeah. Never Here's heard of it either, man. Garth Ennis book I hadn't heard of. Three hundred three. Now I have heard of that. It's an I'm Avatar sure. book, so Gabe might have heard of it. Whoa! I can't show that. It's an Avatar book, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> Holy smoke! Art is on point, though. It yeah. reminds me a little bit of uh, Steve Dillon. Yeah. Uh, Caliban by Garth Ennis. I had heard of this one, but I didn't own it. I did. I had never heard of it, and I got that, too, from Kyle. Like, it, This is an Avatar book, too, right? Yeah. yeah it is. It's, uh, yeah, so this Ennis, is cool. Huh? Hmm. Yeah. I want to get a lot of done reading tonight, man. Uh, not tonight. This week. tonight. Oh, I do have Shipwreck down here with me. Okay, right. Outer Darkness. That's the book that came in for me, yeah. That looks very manga-ish, but it's all in one. It looks really interesting. It does look uh, manga-ish to me, yeah. Uh, that doesn't look like an American comic. Uh, <laughs> have I already talked about Ab Irado? You got this too, didn't you? Mm-hmm, I did. Latin I don't know. From anger? Okay, maybe you got it before I did. Probably. Uh, this one looks really bitching to me. Yeah. I think the concept and everything sound really cool. Somebody from Lion Forge. Yeah, somebody commented saying that that was a really good book. I can't remember who it was. Did you get this one? The uh, Gemini? The complete series? I, I did, yeah. Where is that? Uh, ne- yeah, here it I is. I never, never heard of this. this right is, here, uh, yeah. I never heard Jay, of it either. Jay Farber. And yeah. the artwork... Who is the artwork? John Somariva. I don't know who that is, but it kind of reminds me a little bit of, uh, oh, what is the guy from DC that can't keep a monthly schedule? John Boy Meyer. John Boy Meyer. <laughs> yeah, it kind of reminds me a little bit of that. Little he also can't keep up on sketches that he owes people from stuff, too, either. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't um, know that. There's a story there. Didn't know that. Sorry, sorry, John Boy, if you're watching. Um, you know, very cartoony. I dig it. But I've never heard of this. Like for some reason, the characters look familiar, though. Like the costumes. Yeah. I don't know why, but maybe I maybe it's a comic book I saw sitting on the shelf and I just never picked it up. He wrote uh, Copperhead, which I like so much. Here's the shipwreck. I started it uh, with uh, Warren Ellis that uh, Omar talked about. Here's another Farber book, two volumes one and two of Elsewhere. A seriously transported to a strange new world filled with flying beasts and alien civilizations, Amelia desperately struggles to return home. So the artwork looks cool and the story sounds cool. These are perfect for me because there's skinny little trade paperbacks that I can whip out in like half an hour and yeah. feel accomplished. So if you if you see them big and thick, you get over like overwhelmed and you're like, I can't handle that. Can you word that a little differently? I was going to word big and thick trade paperbacks. Oh, okay. as long as you put trade paperbacks in there, yeah. Okay, yeah, I don't <laughs> get it. Yeah, okay. All right. All right, you're not intimidated by little thin 
trade paperbacks. Correct. Got it. Got it. Everybody remember that. Don't give Jess any big, thick trades. Yeah, that's how I'd put it. Uh, if, it's size, a, if it's not a handful, keep it away from Jess. <laughs> <laughs> Cy Spurrier, whom I love, hadn't heard of this, Motherland. This looks really cool. So I love Cy Spurrier. So I'm yeah, excited. you're a big fan of the Spire. Yeah, yeah, baby. Did you like his Legion, X-Men Legion? I did. Yeah, and Tyler Blunt did too, which I was really happy about. You were happy that Tyler Blunt liked it? Yeah. Okay. Because I was afraid it might be too out there for Tyler. Oh, is he not smart? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I was remotely going there. But <laughs> uh, I did for you. I, I, I was putting two and two together for you. You were I putting got... words in my mouth, you mean? That's what I do best. Holy yeah. guacamole. <laughs> a, couple of, a couple of red team books by Garth Ennis. Yes, yes. Uh, I had heard of these, but I did not own them. Dynamite books. And then lastly, Black Road, The Holy North by Brian Wood. Yeah, I got so, that one too. I never heard of this book. No. Me neither. So, that one looks awesome. Um, so he, he got me a couple more, and then I got one more haul, and I'll take a break to let uh, Gabe do it. Did he get the, you some that he didn't get me, Mom? Uh, this is Skyborn. Skyborn, did you get this one? I did this not. is Frank Joe. Uh, I bought this myself. I mean, that was yeah. <laughs> then 1975, which I've been wanting to read for a long time. So I saw it in the previews a couple months ago. Um, it's Joe, it's a Joe Casey and, uh, Ian Mac Mac Macewan. I don't know. I like the art. It's freaking cool. I like the use of colors. It's an image book. And I think it's an all in one image book too. It's, it's, there's not a volume number on here. So should be. Yeah, should be all collected in this. Then I got two more books, and I got to give a shout out. But Gabe, why don't you go ahead? All right, my turn for this stupid big ass haul. I got. All right, so let's kind of just get this started. First off, I'll just show the thing that. Yes, you there? Oh yeah. All right. Is this There's, the thing I'm yeah, gonna hate? Uh, maybe. This is a Batman sort of Azrael poster. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, and this is so we got this out of a we buy a lot of collections and stuff, right? So we always find crazy things like posters and old promotional material. This is signed by Joe Casada from 1992. Look at all the pointy edges on everything. That's cool at, that it's signed by him, but look at yeah. all the pointy edges all over the place. The whole and the thing, ribbons. incredible. Look at all that. Look at the fire on the sword. <laughs> oh my god! Look at he draws such a cool Batman. What a great Batman. The gargoyle. Just like the perspective on this thing is really neat. This is great. I, I actually, I hate to tell you this, but I don't hate that. Oh, darn. I don't. Good, I'm glad I'm, you don't hate it. I don't I'm want you to sorry. Hate it. I actually kind of dig that, especially that it's signed by him. Because at first I thought it was a Dark Knight or uh, Nightfall at first. And I first saw it. I was like, oh, it's Nightfall. Just is going to love it. <laughs> it's all right, actually um, pretty cool. So, all right. So, also... I got some big ass books as well, big thick books. This one isn't quite big and thick, but this is one that Jess would like. I know you liked it a lot. We talked about it recently. Yep. All my heroes have been junkies by Ed Brew Baker, uh, which is uh, now out of print. Fantastic book. Uh, Mr. Miracle. This is the comic book store exclusive hardcover, standard size Ooh. hardcover. Did you did you guys see the Barnes and Noble exclusive one? The hardcover or the trade? Hardcover. Oh, I thought it was a hardcover. There's a trade. Oh, yeah, I I a trade, trade. trade. Uh, this is a good question. Uh, I want to know how many books you guys have bought and never read. <laughs> All of I'm going to go ahead and say a lot. A, a lot. lot. Yeah. A lot. A lot. I used Just to be her. able – I was in control. I was. I had this for a long time. I had about 85% of my library read. Now oh, it's probably more like 65%. Just because, well, I know, you know what? It's probably like 75%. I've have read a lot of shit, but then there's so many books that have come out that I'm like, okay, I read one issue and then stop there. What about most you? Most of my collection, most of my collection, I would say the collection I have back here, 
Mm -hmm. I would say maybe 25% of it is read, but I've read it in different formats before. The the omnibuses and stuff like that, I haven't really checked out a lot of, but I used to have most of the stuff in trades or mostly, honestly, probably singles when they were first coming out. And this is an honest question because this reminds me of my friend Rob, who's a co-host on my show. He buys video games, right? He buys a physical copy of a game, and then he buys the digital copy so he doesn't have to open the physical copy. I wonder if there's any buddy out there like that for omnibuses right like buys the omnibus keeps it sealed and just reads the digital copy or buys I, two copies i think it. make havocs like that does he not read his omnis he just reads the digital versions of them i think he i think make havoc might uh read the floppies and have the sealed omnis as a collectible am i right make havoc is he in the chat he is in the chat yeah, yeah. He is raf in the chat is our boy Raf in the chat today? Nash, Nash, Nash villains. Yeah, he was asking me a question on Instagram, and I was gonna—I uh, was looking stuff up. Oh, so, make, yeah. make have said go to hell, Jess. I don't know what that means. <laughs> 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 oh, maybe I'm misreading that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it, though. I mean, I, I think a lot of people who do that, you know, would want to keep a physical copy because physical copies are becoming or seem to be less and less of a thing. Like uh, we do see in the future, there probably be less physical copy of things in the world. So, so make havoc said yes, by the way. Right. That's what he does. Cool. That's what I thought. That's interesting. Yeah. That's his own thing. I, I figured there's a lot of people like that or, they, or like I said, some that just read digital to keep their omnis sealed. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, Hey Steve, make havoc. Are you going to, uh, Las Vegas, amazing, amazing Las Vegas this weekend. All right, so what was that? So Mr. Miracle, and then I got uh, Punisher Volume 2 from Punisher Max. Nice. Volume 2 of that. So that completes the uh, the Punisher stuff. Um, lots of Spider-Man stuff, actually. So I got uh, Spider-Man versus Venom on the bus as well. And you have something to tell us about that book. I do. It is uh, out of print. Out of print? I was waiting for that thing to be liquidated. It was liquidated. Wait, I have it. It was liquidated. A lot of liquidated stuff. It's, you know, a lot of stuff that I got here is stuff that came from the liquidation sale. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some of that stuff, a lot of that stuff is now out of print. They did their job. They did what they needed to be done. it's, It's not liquidated. It's on sale. Liquidated would have made it like 12 bucks. Dude, these things were like these things for storage were like thirty to thirty dollars. Yeah, so they're, they're that. pretty pretty close to being. I liquidated. think it's really cool that Marvel did that though. Like you know, giving stores a chance to order books. Of course, stores are going to sell it for retail, but yeah, well, yeah, retail. that's how that's how retail works. <laughs> All right, uh, and then Thor. This is the Heroes Re- Reborn saga or era, volume mm-hmm. two. And contains Ragnarok, not written by Dan Jurgens. Nope, but it does have Disassembled, written by Warren Ellis. Or no, wait, that was... Uh, no, it's Oming. Uh, yeah, Michael Avon Oming. I always, I always get confused because there's two ends. You know, there's two series of Thor that ended. One was written by Warren Ellis. It was uh, Michael Avon Oming. Um, so that completes the Thor stuff that I wanted. I have all the Thor stuff that I need. Because uh, the Heroes Are Born stuff is some of my favorite stuff. And then I got the JMS uh, as well. Also talking about things that I want to complete. Uh, Spider-Man Clone Saga Volume 1. I pulled an Omar, found one for cheap, and had to grab it. So that means I had to grab, <laughs> a, I had to grab the rest of them. So one that's Volume the, 1. Didn't one of those go out of print recently? I think Volume 2 is very close right now. Volume 2 is out of print. It's sold out through the distributor right now. Dead, dead. Okay. dead. <laughs> so oh, Marvel, Marvel, Marvel's going to gonna find a pallet full of that shit. <laughs> I mean, like, oh, never there might be a warehouse okay. somewhere that might just have a bunch what of What a miracle. Stuff, but... We found a bunch of clone saga that we were going to dump in the river. All right. And this is also those that book and that series. And was like, oh, it's out of print. I don't care. That's fine. And then wait, give it a couple of months. But, oh, uh, anybody uh, anybody can hook me up with the uh, <laughs> clone saga clones? volume? Two? Never, never <laughs> thought the clone saga would be a sought after book. Well, you know I mean, I mean? It, it might. It might not still be. I, I gave it about a year before. Well, I have I have the Ben Riley on the bus on order. I think I, I'm, I think I'm picking that up this week. Uh, okay, I just want to go back real quick. Spider Man versus Venom. Uh, I got this just for Maximum Carnage because this is the only oh, yeah. time Maximum yeah. Carnage has been compiled into a hardcover besides that 
super hard to find QVC box set that they did back in the day for the video game. But yeah, this is totally worth it alone just for the Maximum Carnage storyline. How, how many parts was that? 16, 18? 16, 18? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a long one. Yeah, that's the only reason I had it, but I ended up selling mine because I was like, I'm sure one day we'll get a David Mich- Michelini Omni. But mm-hmm. what well, they, they kind of it's been split up more or less. A lot of the Michelini, Michelini stuff has been split up in different omnibuses already. There's that Amazing Spider Man, Todd McFarlane omnibus. Mm-hmm. There's the uh, Michelini and Eric Larson. There's the Spider Man versus Venom. Uh, I and think all we really need is like there's, a Michelini like Bagley. We need Bagley, one, yeah. but it would have to. I mapped that one out. It would be a huge omnibus. Like, I think it's enough for two, and nobody wants to buy that much crap. Yes, I do. I want that Mark Bagley stuff for sure. Like, first appearance of like 16 stuff. Well, and that's, if, they fill, stuff. if they fill it up with that, yes. But I'm talking about all the other crossover events, like the Web of Spider Man stuff. All or, that uh, stuff has to be collected in there. What well, was that crossover that was uh, with Thrasher and Punisher? Red Robin or Round Robin? Round Robin, there it is. I yeah, love that crossover. Exactly. It's, not, it's, not even, it's not even a crossover, it's just an event thing that Yeah, but still. With. Uh, and then we got, uh, I've got, oh, I just that hurt picking this up. Uh, Blackest Night. Yeah. Show me that 10th Blackest anniversary, Night. baby. On, is it on the spine? It's on the, it's on the front. Mm-hmm. And it's on the spine. I'm going to take a Sharpie to that. It's not as, I don't think it's as bad as like the, bla- uh, what was it, Final, Final Crisis? Yeah. Final Crisis. Was like, that's pretty it was like bad. The whole cover, basically, it felt like. So, yeah. So, that's up. Um, a lot of that stuff that was liquidated is now out of print. So I'll be making posts about that on our Instagram. So, yeah. Uh, Spider-Man versus Venom, that's out of print. Clone Saga Volume 2 is out of print. And there's a few more that I just uh, I, sure. I looked at. People have been asking on Instagram, what's out of print? And I've been looking it up. So There's a good question from Drew B. Does Omnibros Network know they don't have to buy every single omnibus that ever comes out? What? What? Since wait, wait, nobody, man. Why did you tell us this three years ago? Um, I mean, bros. And here's um, the thing, honestly, <laughs> um, I I have curated my collection. I'm continuing to curate it, so it's gonna. It's basically coming down to just the stuff that I hold as being top notch storytelling and stuff that I hold nostalgia and appreciation for. So I don't buy everything. It just seems that all the stuff that's coming out lately is stuff that I consider in that pinnacle in that range, including stuff that we'll be talking about tonight that I definitely need to pick up too. Right. I definitely have been also curating mine. I've been going at mine savagely with a machete and selling all kinds of Omnis. Yep. What? I, you never hit me up. <laughs> I'm only hitting you up when I sell my Captain Marvel statue. <laughs> You'll be the first one to know about that. I 2022. Oh. I usually pick up just if it's got a if it's an X Men title, I'll probably end up getting it in the omnibus format or OHC format. Um, but you know, sometimes I have to oh, or Spider Man. I do like Spider Man. Yeah, I'm as a far as like Spider Man, like the Silver Age stuff, I sold all my Omnis. I sold my Hulk. I sold my Thor. I sold <laughs> my Captain America. All that stuff is gone. So uh, I, I, I like the epic formation. Chase Chone in the chest. So why did you buy the Clone Saga stuff? Because I like the Clone Saga stuff. The first, I think, that's, that's, I think the that's first omnibus stuff. is pretty solid for the most part. But holy shit, that second omnibus is kind of hard to get through. Now the art is solid for, no, well, for the most part. It's good stuff. I mean, every you, you go through an era like almost any era that lasted that long, you're gonna you're gonna hit your your peaks and your valleys. I think it's, it's, it's and your bad stuff, and of course it's subjective and all. But I think Clone Saga was a strong, strong part of Spider-Man's history because of, you know, it, it that was Marvel's attempt to try to replace Peter Parker for a little bit, and then the whole thing with uh, Mary Jane being pregnant and losing the baby. There's a lot of stuff in there that people just don't give enough appreciation to. I'm gonna start a I'm going to start an Instagram, and it's going to be called 90s Comics Are Awesome, and I'm going to go talk about cool 90s comic books. <laughs> there's a lot of good comic books. There's many, many. The 90s. There's, a, uh, there's literally like a, a year lot, or A lot of it has two. to do with nostalgia. I think it's interesting, though, that Marvel 
unlike DC, has released some of these books that a lot of people consider trash, right? Like, a lot yeah. of people hate Atlantis Attacks. A lot of people hate Avengers The Crossing. A lot of people hate Spider-Man The Clone Saga. But, but they released them in them. omnibus format, yeah. right? And I don't... I mean, I can't imagine a... I don't know, a movie company making a limited edition or a big uh, special edition of a movie that's just, you know, so well hated. <laughs> I... I it's it's an odd marketing move, that's for sure. Well, I mean, Infinity Gauntlet is a '90s book that people, you know, kind of written off and thought was stupid for the longest time until the movies came around. No, well, um, I think that one is different though. That one aged differently. Like people, even back then, people hated on Avengers: The Crossing. Even back then, people were hating on Spider-Man: The Clone Saga. Right? I think yeah. Infinity Gauntlet was a story that back then people were on board with it. Well, here's the thing: a lot of those, and this is this is not going to be a blanket statement, so everybody kind of calm down a little bit. Uh, the oh, people boy. that I hear <laughs> coming from where they say 90s comics were bad or this was bad or that was bad were people who were not really into the comics at the time. It's either the people talking about it now looking back or people that we talk about in our chat from that's a little bit of an older era who hated the 90s and the changes that were implemented with the change of like Chris Claremont leaving and that kind of uh, turnkey situation where Bob Harris took over Marvel Comics and things did change and they stepped away from comics and now they had a negative view of that era even though they never really invested their reading time and material and money into those comics at the time. And of course, everybody's you know, teenage years is like their golden age for everything. Music, movies, comic books, video games, whatever I have. So that's where I'm coming from is from somebody that couldn't wait to get to the comic book store to get the next hollow foil embossed comic book to see what's going on. Is this the real Spider-Man? Uh, what's happening with uh, Bruce, uh, Bruce Wayne and Batman? He always, his back just got broken. I need to know what happens next. Things like that. So it's really... Most of the naysayers are people who weren't in there at the time. Somebody like Jess, who I know, just has said it plenty of times. It's been no secret that he dipped out of comic books in the nineties. And uh, well, I did didn't too. come back around until like the the, the late two thousands or something. I, I I quit comic books at, after Onslaught, and I came back. I was uh, Grant Morrison. I, was, new I was collecting comics in the nineties. Really? I swore you said that you stopped after like Death of Superman or something. Oh uh, well, yeah. After okay. Death of Superman, I'd say probably late 90s is probably when I got out. Probably, yeah, late 90s is when I got out. 2008 is when I got back in. Death of Superman mm. was 1992. Oh. <laughs> Those were just... Was it really? Those yeah, 1992. Those are the Coke years. <laughs> <laughs> my lost, my lost that went years. That, that went through. <laughs> My 40s, those lost years. <laughs> um, I, well, let me think. What was that's um, the Superman? People give a lot of lot of crap about Death of Superman, but look, that's had three. I like that story, releases, and it's still a good story. There's there's some weird stuff in there, and Superman has a mullet, but that's 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 of the time. I think there was but a lot of good stuff still, in funeral for a friend. Like there's some beautiful writing in there. Up. I mean, the idea of the four new Superman, and you know, it was like who is the real Superman? Even though none of them were the real Superman, but a lot of great stuff came out of it. That's where you got Superboy, one one of the best Superboys. Sorry, Jess, uh, came no, from okay. that, that Superman line. Steel, Steel is Steel, but you can't. I mean, still things like uh, the Eradicator and Cyborg, Cyborg Superman. Superman, who Jeff Johns made into a complete badass. Yes, yeah. yes. Nightfall is still good. Sorry, Jess. No, but that <laughs> stuff is still a thing. It was interesting to go back and reread a lot of the stuff that I missed when, what, when I came what back. What are some like, events I, that happened like around 96, 97 for Marvel and DC? Marvel was Onslaught. 96 was Onslaught because that's yeah. when I left. Yeah, it wasn't around for that. I want to say for DC was Final Night. Final Night was the event. Or uh, was it uh, zero, zero Hour? I think Zero Hour was, was like 92. Like Is 90, it that? Okay. Yeah, I think Final Night was the event going around at the time of '96. Yeah, you know, my I think uh, things changed when my daughter was born in '91. I feel like probably the mid to late '90s, I was more focused on raising my daughter than collecting. And then 2008, when she was in high school and stuff, 
and I stopped drinking and had more m spare money for comics instead of alcohol. I think that's when I started spending money on comics wow. again. Mm, that's a good move. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden I had a hundred extra dollars a week that I wasn't spending on alcohol. Okay, so and, and you were kind of sober and not all like like sloshy all over the place. So to be able to both <laughs> Kenny and uh, Make Havoc said ninety four was ninety four. Okay, so. and then Final Night was ninety six. Yeah, I don't think I was around for those. So yeah, you're that probably That was a good one, man. That's yeah. when Hal like sacrificed himself and kind of redeemed his. Yeah, and then I, that that led into the new JLA, right? And I can't write the JLA because mm -hmm. that also like the blue and red Superman stuff, I think, too. Yeah. Grant Morrison, man. Yep. Making no, never mind. Uh keep so, yeah, going great with your back then. Great, that's it. No, uh oh. Uh I just came back, that's why I was late. I got a brand new phone. I just switched providers, I switched over to Verizon. Got a new phone. Um, That's so a big now, haul. Uh, I'm sorry? That's a big haul. Yeah. New phone's a big deal. It is a big deal. Switch providers. Switch. New, got a new phone. That's man. It kind of sucks when you get a new phone because you have to kind of restart everything all over again. Even though you are able to kind of like transfer like your photos and your apps and stuff like that over. But still, I was like, oh, I had to log into the Omni Bros uh, information. I got to log into the Torpedo information. Oh, my, 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 my car doesn't recognize this phone. So... I can't I listen hate to my that. podcast. I and, know. I hate uh, my Wi-Fi at home doesn't recognize it yet. So I got to redo all that. The Wi-Fi at work is going to recognize it. So I got to redo that. You know, there's this whole new, you know, integration that you have to get into. And I got and it's all just like bloated bullshit apps on there and stuff that I got to delete and, you know, adjust the settings. And, but I do kind of find that stuff kind of, kind of cool. Same number. Yes. Make havoc. Same number. So hit me up. You have my number. Uh, Jake, I switched my Silver Age Omnis to Epics because I like the format of Epics, and I don't need everything oversized. Yeah, you know, I like weird. Epics for I like Epics for Silver Age stuff too. Um, Speaking of, uh, uh, Clark Nato in the chat even mentioned, you know what? You know, much as people want to hate on this '90s stuff, that Golden Age Omnibus stuff is pretty whack too, man. That stuff is terrible. Sorry, oh, I, I've made several. <laughs> <laughs> I have made several attempts to read Golden Age and Silver Age DC, and it's just not it's, for me. It's hard. Even though yeah. people tell me to read uh, Fourth World, right? Because that's a kind of a thing of its own, uh, which I may give it a try. It's just, I don't, my DC started with Crisis on Infinite Earths, so. Yeah, I mean, my I DC, that. honestly, I think I said it before, my DC was Death of Superman for the most part. That's what really dug me into that world, the breaking of the bat, Batman stuff. And then outside of the Batman stuff, I didn't read any DC besides Vertigo. So, but good stuff. So that's my haul. What'd you get, Omar? Uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to my boy, Bryant. Uh, he found out I was looking for this book and he not only sent me this, but he also sent me volume three of Moon Knight Epic Collections. So this is the one that's out of print. This is Which the one is that? Shadows of the Moon. Okay. Oh man, I have that. I might have more at the store, maybe. That that's out of print. That's and, the Bill Kevich this, stuff. Yeah, and then uh, the Sinkevich stuff ends here before yeah. he went on and did uh, New Mutants. And this is volume three. So I need, I need to get volume one on honestly. I love the epic collection stuff, man. That's oh, they're good. Is, I mean, you great. know, when it's the amount of time and love that go into these, they really don't make that much money printing these things i mean this is the, the like it's bigger than the freaking masterworks right and it's the same yeah. kind of treatment that a masterworks get when you're redoing the the pages it's a nice so, soft cover what are they like 30 bucks 30, they're 30 to 40. Yeah. yeah and I, that's part of the reason why marvel has a hard time reprinting them like because they have to justify reprinting a book that it will sell right and if these things are only making you you know a few dollars they'd rather reprint another trade paperback so that's why a lot of people are asking questions like when are these epics going to get reprinted it's it's kind of a hard sell for the collected editions department to go to marvel and be like hey we need to reprint moon knight number two so what they're trying to do now is keep all number ones in print which i think is a good move yeah that's you know, where we sell number one. Yeah. And that's where everything begins, right? That's the smartest thing they ever did with an epic was put the numbers in the back, not on the spine. Brilliant, brilliant marketing move. And they're also printing them out of order too. So Yeah, that was that's smart. Uh, there's a lot of things DC could learn from the way that they did these things, but yeah, whatever. So uh, uh what's real next? quick, let me do this. Oh, is, uh, 
I think Geo, but Geo is is he AFK right now? Yeah, I think he's away. Um, so like I said, I was looking up a lot of the uh, liquidated books, so mm -hmm. I can give you I can give you guys uh, an update on what I found to now recently be out of print that I don't think we knew about before. Uh, let me look it up real quick. Um, so I talked about uh, Spider Man versus Venom. The Carnage Omnibus is out of print now. And uh, Darth Vader, the Karen Gillan Darth Vader Omnibus is out of print. And Trials of Captain America. Oh, I thought you were going to say Trial of Gambit. <laughs> that's not an omnibus. <laughs> it, it, the only way that's out of print is because I bought 25,000 copies. <laughs> that's not an omnibus. Um, <laughs> so a little information out there for, for everybody watching on what's out of print right now. Or at least it's sold out through Diamond that stores can't get. You can still find these things maybe on store shelves or online, but those are the last in stock. Mm. So what's up next? You want to do uh, reads or you want to get – damn, yeah. it's already 6 o'clock. Um, 6, do reads. reads. I, I, have Nine just, over here. I have a short list of reads. Cool. So I can do that real quick. Do what you got to do. Um, I finished Road to War of Kings, and I started about a quarter of the way in War of Kings, and I've been thinking about it, Omar. Uh -huh. This X-Men story uh -huh. in so that's, Road uh, to War of Kings. What is that? That's the... Gen Deadly uh, Genesis. Deadly Genesis. Yeah, yeah. I've been thinking about it a lot. Okay, why is that? Uh -oh. Why is that? What's the verdict? It has now become. Don't say it. The worst story oh. I have ever read in the history yes. of comics. What? <laughs> the worst. <laughs> nice. Story? Okay, I don't like that story at all. But there's a it, lot shit in your stories. What was the problem um, with it besides the art? My God, this retcon of a retcon of a retcon is ridiculous. I can't, I don't blame Ed Brubaker at all for this. I'm sure that he was just a young up and coming guy who got handed this steaming pile of an idea and was said, and they said, try and make this better and try and write this. And he said, I need to eat. So I will write this story for you. So I don't blame Ed Brubaker at all. And I've been reading uh, how it's going in War of Kings and I see what he's trying to do with it there. So, so you and rise and rise and fall of the Shi'ar Empire, the, right? That's the storyline. That yeah. one's a little bit better, right? I agree. It's a, it's a little bit better. Deadly Genesis was just so stupid. Like, just watch what man she got hit by a plane. I and and there's this X Men team all of a sudden that nobody knew about that yeah. gets sent into battle from to save the guys from giant size X Men. In the in the Savage Lands that we didn't know about, and all of a sudden it causes causes a falling out between Moira McTaggart and Professor X, and he feels guilty, and Vulcan's the only one left, and all of a sudden he's a Summers brother and a Smothers brother, and he's a <laughs> has a, a guy inside him, Jarwin, uh, and we're supposed to believe that this is a, a and. A, Professor X wiped it out from everybody's memory, and this is the I want to, I want to carve it out of the book, and <laughs> set it on fire, and pour root beer on it, and set it, uh, then put it in a rocket, send it to the moon, blow up the moon, have the moon pieces and rocks fall to the earth, and pour root beer on those, and blow up those pieces. And I haven't thought any further than that because then all the tides will stop yeah, because we're, the moon's we're, we're all dead because you did not like Deadly Genesis. Yeah. That, that, that Genesis is totally deadly now. <laughs> uh, I, I hate I, that story with a fiery passion because it is so stupid and poorly thought out. I hate it worse now than I hate it than I hate um, what's his name? Yeah. Wolfman? Yes. I hate it worse oh, than his wow. founding Wolfman. I hate wow. it worse than... Man. I hate it worse than uh, 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 That's Batman's. What's his name? Kevin uh, Smith's Batman. Smith's Batman. Oh, uh, cacophony. 
The Cavani Widening Gyre. Oh, those are right, awful. Those are terrible books. Right, but old old reader, thing. new reader, we're going to do Chuck Austin's run on X Men, and I'm going to have you come along. <laughs> so you can appreciate how well, tell good us what you think about Deadly Vulcan. Genesis is. Holy compared smoke. To Chuck Austin's run on X Men. Holy smoke. Really? Yes, really. Yes. Chuck Austin's run is horrible. Like I, And if they release an omnibus, you're goddamn right, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> The more I think about Deadly Genesis, the more I hate it. Oh, I, think, my I think what we learned here is you just agrees that Adam X should have been the Summers brother. Or Gambit. <laughs> and not Vulcan. Uh, you mean Spoilers. extreme, extreme Adam, Adam X. X. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Oh, apparently, uh, Make Havoc agrees, too. He knows what's up. Uh, Make Havoc, War of Kings is out of print. Yes. It is? Yeah. yeah. Damn. The, the other yeah. two on the buses are still in stock, though. Yeah, but they're teetering on the edge. Um, and I agree, uh, Sprecher and Frost Top are the best root beers, El Denver. Uh, Freddie Alonzo, that is Grant Morrison's run on New X Men, where he was trying to kill Cassandra Nova. I mean, <laughs> Red, it, it, Redcons, I know this is a whole different subject, but Redcons, if they're done properly, they don't really bother me that much. I just don't like. And you're right. This is probably an editor was like, "Hey, we need to get, we need to create a new third Summers brother." And some, you know, they're probably all interns. Probably nobody remembered Adam X or Gambit. You know, how can you not remember Gambit? Don't give me that. Well, they can't remember that the idea was originally that he was supposed to be the third Summers. Oh yeah, because after Fabian Nicieza left in the middle of that, that well, that's they, what they, don't, up they don't. They don't care. No, so editors exactly. are like, "Yeah, whatever. All right, we'll create a new guy. His name is Vulcan." And there was another team of X Men, right? Whatever. <laughs> that well, story was so dumb. I was, and I wasn't a fan with Trevor Hairsire, Her Hairsire, whatever his name was, the artist. I wasn't a fan of his art at all. I just, I don't know. To to me, this this is getting into um, getting into Scarlet Witch, not having children territory. It's just <laughs> awful. And that happened. That's happened twice now that the world's been ruined because she hasn't had children. It's just <laughs> somebody what knocked her over, right? Sometimes I think uh, DC has it right with just rebooting everything. Yeah. Uh, fuck it, let's do it all. Who cares? No more Superboy. So that's that's it for me for reading. That's all I've read is is trying to get be, uh, going on War of Kings, and I'm enjoying. War of Kings, all the X Men issues. Those are really good. I really enjoy what I've read so far. I've read a ton of it. Good, good. And it's flowing nicely. You know, um, retcons are, are always. A lot of times, the retcons is either you you accept it or you choose to ignore it. Like like Mopey the Elf from DC, who was a little imp who caused the lightning bolt to strike the chemicals that oh, right. on his powers. Mm. Right. That's the thing nobody talks about, but that is That was like Flash 175 canon. or something. Yeah. 160, 167? 167, okay, yeah. I say, somewhere around there. You know I remember right? that. That was I was a little kid. And yeah. Grant, Grant Morrison did some too during his run that I was not happy with. My big one was the uh, Assault on Weapon Plus. Uh, I hated the idea that Weapon X was actually Weapon 10. Like, no. <laughs> That's not the way it works. But anyway, everybody does it. It just depends on the execution. Mm -hmm. uh, I read a couple of books. Oh, I read uh, Dead, Dead State, the Kyle Higgins book, Jess. Oh, yeah. What did you think out. of it? Loved it. Yeah. It's awesome, huh? Yes. I love the idea of just Russian spies living in this little town and trying to keep out everybody from there because I don't want to give it away because whenever we do reviews, we don't spoil things. But, like, I like the way that the nuclear uh, computer system worked. Yeah. You know, if you remember that. Right, that was yeah. Wicked. wicked. Loved it. And what else did I read? That state's awesome. We're reading Infinite Crisis, the omnibus for old reader, new reader, when Maddie comes back from China. So I've been reading some of that. I read the first couple of issues of Volume oh, 2. Oh, is she in China right now? That's awesome. Good for her. She is leaving tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Cool. Good for her, man. That's awesome. It's for work. So, yeah, she's wow. excited. 
She speaks Chinese too, right? Uh, yeah. Chinese and Japanese. That's uh, amazing. Still, okay, she, is, is, is it Mandarin? Mandarin or? Mandarin, I guess. I don't know. Mandarin. Chinese. She's a, she's a pretty bright lady. She's I would think. Mm -hmm. Um. But I think that's that's mainly it. We've been looking at houses, so that's what I've been doing for a while. Yo, are you getting ready to move? I think so. Cool, man. I've been uh, I'm contemplating it myself. I want to kind of get out of this area of town a little bit, but it's yeah. I don't the, 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 the housing I don't market look here. Forward to this. I don't look forward to this. No way, man. Yeah, make no. friends at comic book stores now and get all their boxes on Tuesdays. Do not look. Yeah, Trust you're right. Me. I need to start doing that. You're right. That's yeah. a smart move. That's the best uh, thing to do. Anybody okay. out there, if you ever move. Make friends with your comic book store. Go there on Tuesday. Say, hey, I'll break down all the boxes if you let me take them home with me. And they'll be like, sure. I... So that's those are the best boxes to move. Your, your omnibuses and trade paperbacks and all that stuff. And you're going to need a lot of them. So you're going to be need to go every week for probably a couple months, depending. If you're oh. Omar, you're going to have to. You should have went started two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Almost but that's your best way to get free boxes for something like that. You guys want to look at uh, the books coming out this week? I know that. Give me uh, uh, give Amazing Spider-Man is coming out. Okay. Give me five Spider seconds because I read. Let me do oh, my yeah, research. I'm sorry. I'll you make go, it quick. You, I'll make you go it ahead quick. and talk about that. I got to go help my wife move a shelf, so I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> move a shelf. I know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> it takes longer than five seconds. <laughs> I, I your wife, right? No, I'm teasing. All right, so uh, I finished volume one of Trans Metropolitan. Uh, there's not much more I can say that I haven't said every other time that we talk about this. Amazing book. Uh, there's a character in here named Dean Heller that's running for president. Uh, I don't want to get too political, but there is a part in here where Spider Jerusalem goes to a rally. Somebody gives Spider Jerusalem a bunch of uh, uh, static and nonsense and gets in his face. Spider Jerusalem punches him in the face, and the entire assembly applauds him and talks about the weak is weak and you need to punish the weak and beat the weak. It's, sounds very familiar. Certain things that have gone on uh, in the last couple of years. Hmm. Uh, so I've moved on to volume two. I'm about halfway through volume two. Still a lot of uh, reminiscent things in here that's going on today. This book is very futuristic. Um, but there's okay. a part in here where a uh, uh, some policemen uh, kill somebody based on their genetic code. And they get away with it. And oh. um, they, they cover it up. And they kill witnesses and crazy stuff like that. So... Something that's also sadly uh, familiar. It's a thick absolute. Yeah, it's yeah. There, there, there. That there's three of them too. It's sixty issues. I so, see. and uh, it's not a haul, but something I lost. I finally hit my two hundred pound weight goal. Nice. So I have made that happen. I've, I've achieved that, and uh, I feel pretty good about it. And I went out today and had a ramen. Same place I took you to, Jess, when you were out. Oh, there. that's them's good noodles there. Them is some good noodles. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on Transmet because I've been talking about it for the last couple of shows because that's what I'm reading through right now. I'll be starting volume three when I get uh, the chance. Wait, wait a minute. What was the thing that Jess was supposed to hate that, that you hauled? Oh, that poster. It was the poster. Oh, the poster okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, but okay. he ended up liking it, which I'm surprised because I thought he hates everything like Asriel and Batman, <laughs> Asriel related. Well, it was cool with the signature. So I well, honestly, I, I, I kind of jumped the gun when, I, when they first showed it to me. I was like, oh, cool. I looked at it. Oh, I really want this. This is great. I thought it was a Nightfall. And I was like, oh, man, it's a Nightfall fucking poster. That's super cool. But I like Asriel. I think just Joe Quesada in that time frame was doing fantastic art. So mm -hmm. that's what I thought he was going to hate. But I knew ended up, what he ended up hating, something. yeah. But what he ended up really hating on the show was War of Kings. Uh, Road to War of Kings was deadly oh, Genesis. To, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not a very good story. Holy smoke! I'm really angry at it. Oh yeah, we got a uh, Nathaniel eight four four eight hit us up in the uh, the super chat for two bucks. Thank you, super Nathaniel. Chat. You. I'm gonna shout him out. Shit. New phone. Where's my fucking camera? Sorry. 
Or is it? I'm gonna take a picture of this and throw it up on our Instagram, but I don't know where the camera is. I'm gonna be like, I gotta be a weirdo and like search for it. There it is. Yes, I want you to save it to my SD card. Boom. Oh, is that fancy camera? Yeah, I got the uh, new S10 Plus. Oh, that's great. Cool, because I could charge other phones with this phone. What? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. magic. That is magic. That's, 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 that's magic. devil work. <laughs> um. So what's uh what what are we talking about today? Previews. Let's get into previews. Okay. Uh, before we do, Gabe. So I'm just, yes. This is the book I got from Marvel. Are all these damn books this big? What damn books? The monster size books. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Where do you put these? Uh, I put them on. I lay them flat on top yep. of my shelf. Yeah, that's where all like that. that's where all my artist editions. This are, is taller. This is the tallest book I own, and that is uh, beats. It beats out the Little Nemo, the one that Jess and I have. Not okay. the one that broke his computer, but <laughs> uh, the other one, the reprint one. Yeah, you have I have to, the. Uh, you I have, have the to get a Billy. Cover. You have to get a Billy. I got a Billy. Yeah, and then you have to rig up a shelf that'll be big enough for that. See right there? Yeah, I like that, Jess. Yeah, mm. right Jess, there. You got, oh, yeah, you got the Behold Galactus. I so have Behold Galactus the there, yeah. Okay, okay, you big yeah. nerd. I see you. <laughs> you should go to people's houses and start a, net, a Netflix show where you and uh, Nerd Up. We'll call it Nerd Up. Where you go, and, up. Uh, <laughs> you go and redesign people's uh, shelves and stuff. That's the nerd, a nerd up. Uh, if you, if you hit my camera, it's uh that pile over here in the upper left on the upper left corner. That's like, oh all yeah, artist I see. and those are artist editions. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's cool. And those on a that's on a Kalax though, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Where am I going? To Gabe's? Well, I think I'm highlighted. But now you're highlighted because oh, yeah, I because I had me highlighted first. Okay. Now you're highlighted. Yeah, so over here on the upper left corner, I'm pointing at my cursor. Like people can see my cursor. Uh, yeah, up the left-hand corner there by the window, that's uh, my artist editions and my uh, Behold Galactus. Uh, yeah, yeah, because those are the biggest books. Mm -hmm. I can't fit them anywhere else. And I'm going to lay them on the floor or on the ground or anything. Boom. All right, you guys ready to look at some uh, releases for this week and figure out what prices are going on? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. So new releases for June 12th. Uh, in Stock Trade updates their website tomorrow mm -hmm. at noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern. So you'll be able to find these on our sponsor's website at those times. And we will talk about the discount and their special prices as well. So let's start out with Image Comics. We have Ice Cream Man Volume 3. That's going to be a popular one with me and Riley. We love that series. I was going to ask if anybody's read this because I have no idea about this book. Riley and I, I Riley both Riley really it. liked it. Yeah, yeah he and I it's, both love it. It's like a, is, it like, is it a horror book? or Yeah, something? it's like a horror anthology. Stupid phone with its stupid ringtone. That's not my ringtone. All right, uh, <laughs> continuing on. <laughs> Uh, so the Dark Horrors has Art of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Hardcover, um, Dr. Horrible, and Other Horrible Stories, Weird Fantasy Archives. I love the EC stuff. This is good, good stuff. Omar, you buy this stuff, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do. I like the weird fantasy stuff. and the They, they haven't reprinted some of the earlier ones that were done by, uh, what's it called, the Gemstone Publishing. So I'm hoping they go back and do that. I wish I had been collecting those from the beginning. Oh, man, you like, but, you like but that Dark Horse is making it easier, man. Are they? Yeah, because I mean they're reprinting just about everything. The only thing that you have, to, you know, a lot of people hate the color. Like the oh, recolor. they recolored it. Yeah, and it's that computer. Remember, like the Thor Walter Simonson omnibus. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's kind of like that. Hmm. Hmm. I dig it, but I know some people purists really hate on it. They'd rather own the black and white ones. So, oh, okay. That, that's a hard. That's a hard. That's a hard hair to split right there. Do I want black and white or do I want recolored computer colored stuff? 
I don't know. Um, all right. So Final Fantasy Ultimania Archive Hardcover Volume 3, whatever that is. Halo Lone Wolf. I think that was written by like Brian Wood. I thought, isn't that written by somebody? It's written by nobody. I don't mean a nobody, but not anybody I was thinking of. Hey, that's my auntie. <laughs> uh, Moon <laughs> Shadow Hardcover. Yes, yeah, finally. That was a Vertigo book, wasn't it? Moon Shadow? Wasn't, I thought that was a Vertigo book. I don't know. Book I've just been wanting this book for a long time because of the damn cover. And it kept getting resolicited and resolicited month after month. Moon Shadow is the fangirl's pick of the month for 50% off. Nice. According to the 50% of the uh, power couple in comics, uh, Kristen of Reedston. And then. Definitive edition. That is weird. I thought Moon Shadow was a Vertigo book. Here we got Plants vs. Zombies. We got. Predator Hunter 2 trade paperback. Which that Predator stuff seems to be like the last... No, they're, they're losing that, aren't they? Isn't Dark Horse losing that license pretty soon? Maybe, now that uh, Fox merged or uh, sold out to Disney. Who knows? Continuing. Uh, IDW, Berkeley... Uh, I have no idea what this book is. Oh, the Bloom County Artist Edition. That's interesting. Grave trade paperback, My Little Pony, Where and Back Again, Penny Nichols graphic novel, Road of the Dead, Highway to Hell. Here's something for Omar Star Trek versus Transformers and Swamp Monster. Yes, Star Trek versus Transformers. That's awesome. How did I not know about that book? All right, so our first big omnibus, excuse me, first big omnibus for this week is Golden Age Batman Volume Seven. That is fifty percent off. Jess, do you get the Golden Age stuff still? This is where I'm having to decide whether I'm going to keep doing it or not. This is where I'm going to have. I don't know. I don't know. The, well, these are, these are hard for even me to read. Really, and I, and I grew up loving this stuff. I don't know. I I may have to draw the line on these Batman and Superman ones now. And just hold out for the, the Silver Age stuff. Instead. Yeah, but that's that's your that's your honey hole right there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, and then we got a, a Stanley Lau Art Germ uh, portfolio trade paperback. Which I'm guessing is probably a bunch of really cool uh, covers that he's done for DC. Uh, Detective Comics number 1000, Deluxe Hardcover Edition. Hawkman Volume 1 Trade Paperback. Superman Action Comics, The Oz Effect. That was a really good storyline. I like that a lot. Um, the Terrifics Volume 2 and United States vs. Murder, Inc. Volume yeah. 1. That is also 50% off. Moving on into Marvel Comics, we have Avengers No Road Home, Hulk by Loeb and McGinnis Omnibus. This is the uh, Red Hulk storyline. I did an overview of that. Sorry, Jess. Before it even came out, how did that happen? It was Marvel. But yes, uh, continue. It is 50% off. 50% off. And then, oh God, oh, Hulk Varane's uh, Hulk Varane's trade paperback. That's a silly name. God. Uh, and then we got uh, Marvel uh, monograph art of Herberto Ramos trade paperback. Marvel Masterworks uh, Spectacular Spider-Man Volume Seven hardcover. Both covers. Those are both fifty percent off. Those guys can really use it too because 75 bucks for like four issues is nuts. Uh, Mary, uh, Spider Man Loves Mary Jane graphic novel. And then Star Wars Epic Collection uh, Rebellion. Dynamite, uh, getting closer to the release of The Boys on Amazon. 
So we got a uh, um, we got the omnibus trade paperback volume two, and then there is the uh, photo cover based off of uh, is this Kurt Urban, Carl Urban playing uh, the butcher on the cover of that one. Oh, is and, he? That's cool. Yeah. And then uh, Red Sonia Wars Away trade paperback volume four, Blade Staff. Boom Studios has got Big Trouble in Little China, Legacy Collected Edition, and Garfield Snack Pack. And then this is uh, all the other stuff that we kind of just scroll through and wait to see what Gio or Omar get excited about. I haven't uh, been excited about anything in so long. There's that gin book. There hey. it is. <laughs> Volume two. That's all, Jess. <laughs> Oh, look, Hangry. This is about me. Hangry. <laughs> what else? The manga stuff. Uh, uh, Mixed in with Lollipop Kids and My Little Pony. Pekka Gurui is okay. Aftershock Comics with Lollipop Kids. What's that? I I may regret asking this, but it is Aftershock. Uh, Aftershock. They got good stuff. When immigrants come over to the new world, they didn't only bring their hopes and dreams, they also brought their monsters. Ooh. No idea what this is, but I kind of like the art on that cover. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. I think that's. There's another one piece, three and one. Nice. Snowpiercer. I saw some people in the group talking about Snowpiercer. Yeah, these are reprints of those hardcovers. They're awesome. Like, I need to I see have y'all seen those movies? I need They're to freaking, see that. Freaking excellent movies, man. Oh, the first or the only? No, they only did one movie, and it's pretty close to the first book, but it ends differently. Well, they also never did a sequel like with the books here, where the first Snowpiercer was like, you know, let's say it was like 300 carts, however long the the uh, the train was, and then as it got into the second volume, the third volume, it turned into like 15,000 carts is how long the train was, something crazy like that. That did just got up in the ante a little bit, and I think that's it. Yep, nothing here I recognize. All right, guys, so let us know in the chat what are you picking up this week. Remember, we have uh, some good stuff here that's 50% off coming to you from InStockTrades.com. Yeah, everybody's yeah, going to go after that omnibus. The Hulk omnibus? That's another one of those ones that, you know, people don't like the Red Hulk story for, for their own reasons. But this is a this is a, a day one buy for me. I've been I think Riley waiting. really wants it, too. Yeah, waiting for this. Yeah, Riley sold off his uh, oversized hardcovers, I think, in anticipation. It's book's been canceled. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is an ATC book. No, it's coming out, man. It, it's it's a fun summer blockbuster kind of book. That's the way it is. Like, it's, it's Jeff Loeb, you know, having fun with the character. It's okay at best, but man, is the art awesome. That's fifty percent off, and this both spectacular Spidermans are fifty percent off. So Hulk Vereens is not a is not very interesting, huh? It's uh, it's, it's, it's a <laughs> science experiment from what was it called? Weapon H. Weapon H was the, so I thought what, this was part of Weapon Weapon H, but it, I guess it's not. It's it's basically they, they they gave made a clone of Hulk and gave him Wolverine claws. Oh, United wasn't States overpowered enough. enough. It was when there, he wasn't overpowered enough. So you got to give him claws. Exactly. Hulker, is that thing still worth money? First appearance of Hulkerin, whatever his name was. What weapon? Weapon? Whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think that's still some money out okay. there. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man Omni number one will be on IST, and it's forty-two percent off. Yes. Oh, that's question. right. Question. Mix that up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. So the uh, the new printing of Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus Volume One, even though it's not shown on here, and I totally forgot because it's not on here, that is being released. Uh, stores have been invoiced, and it is in this week's uh, shipment for stores. So mm -hmm. if you've been looking for 
I, if I'm you thought on that, this, here's your chance to get it. I will say that it there is one big difference. It does not contain issue 11 that is reprinted in the Deadpool omnibus, classic omnibus. And this is how you start rumors. <laughs> You're just making that up. Of course I'm making that up. Who wouldn't reprint Amazing Spider-Man 11 in that book? <laughs> that would be such a dick move, man. Marvel's like, nope, you got to buy the third printing, asshole. You waited too long. No, I'm glad that book is getting back, man. I'm, I'm glad it's getting back into print. That's a $100 book highlighter. <laughs> Deadpool. <laughs> I think well, Deadpool has that issue. Remember where he travels back in time to that? Yeah, they, they reprint the issue. To, yeah, they reprint that issue. Deadpool That's why it. I made that joke. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's a method to the madness that happens in here. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! So it still seems like, well, no, there's been other Silver Age Marvel omnibuses that's been reprinted, but has they really ever had a reprint? Fighting. Which one? Thor? Has that ever had a reprint? Volume no, one? Thor hasn't. Hulk hasn't. X-Men hasn't. Mm -hmm. And I know uh, Iron Man has not. But Iron Man had three different covers, which is weird, right? It had the movie cover, the Silver Age, the M cover, and then the, uh, was it Carlos Pacheco? Or I can't remember who it was, cover. Yeah. Um, I think they're going to go with the big selling books. The team books are probably going to sell Spider-Man, X-Men, Fantastic Four. I see those yeah. being. I see, you know, we got an FF coming. I, yeah, FF gets reprinted all the time too. I'm pretty sure we're gonna. They're gonna keep reprinting those. So, all right, guys, I gotta jump off here. But oh, was, you got more shelves to move, dude. We're, we're painting. This is not fun. Oh uh, yeah, painting. painting. <laughs> lane, lane carpet. How, how old are you? <laughs> lane carpet. Whoa. Wow. Uh, but yeah, it was fun. So, uh, you can well, find me on my channel go, tomorrow. Before we go, where can they find you tomorrow with your big announcement about something or other? Uh, you can find me on my channel, Near Me Condition, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll do a live show. Of, uh, it's just the advanced uh, September previews. It shows the content, the covers, and all that stuff of the omnibuses that I've been talking about in the breaking news portion of my channel. So really excited about that. That's really cool. And hopefully, you know, the more information I get later on about things, I will be happy to share with everybody. And this is where you tell me they're putting out a collection of Remender's Captain what? America, right? Wait, if you really <laughs> bought that book? I didn't think it was well received. Like people didn't really dig it, right? I the received dimension, it well. Dimension Z, well, you know, Jess, how do I put this nicely? Uh, I want that book. Is how you <laughs> put it nicely. Jess wants that book. Do you know how to have the trades? Like Omar, you can make it what out. What trades? There's trades of it? Yes, the Dimension C shit. Is that what you're talking mm -hmm. about? I didn't know what? they did trades. What did they I didn't think tiny, it was collected at all. Those tiny weird hardcovers too? Came yeah, with form. four issues. That's yeah. what you're talking about, that, right? The Rick Remender yeah, the John Dimension Z. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah that's it's been collected. Dude, man, look, see. here's what you do. You go and subscribe to this show called the uh, Omnibros Live, where we talk about collected <laughs> editions. You open your goddamn ears and you listen when we talk about collected editions. Yeah, man, it was collected like five years ago, probably. It's still in print. It's more I'll make than that four happen. issues, gonna, though. It's like 20 issues, isn't it? No, no the hardcovers like are saying, like tiny like four little, issue ones. They're tiny little trades that you that you love because they don't intimidate you. So they're right up the alley. <laughs> See how I brought that full circle? I brought that wow, full circle. Wow, you did. You took it back right. to the beginning of the show. <laughs> That's what I do, man. All right. Rabbits, I'm going to jump off here. So y'all be good. Leave it to Omar to bring back his joke again. That's, That's okay. It's funny. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Later, dude. All right. Good night, dude. And before we uh, end the show, we need to talk about it at stocktrades.com. We just talked about them, where those books were 50% off. That's right, up to 50% off your collected editions. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. Sometime soon, there will be a, an Omnibros Live discount code. Over $50 in an order in the United States, you get free shipping. Fabulous customer service, fabulous packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. Geo, where can they find you? Uh, we can geek them where I talk about other stuff that's not talked about on Omnibros Live. So there you like go. Like what? Uh, cowards comics called manga and anime. 
Anime. And movies. I like yeah. anime. Do you ever talk about Castlevania? Because I love that show. Uh, I haven't seen it, actually. What the oh, hell? Man. You're missing out, bud. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm not a fan of the games, and and you don't have I to really, be. I didn't like the games uh, either. Yeah, but I tried. I I saw like one episode, and it was okay. I, it, it didn't hook me. Wow, <laughs> I'm weird. Well, I'm sorry to leave you on such a sour note, but yeah, I'm. I'm Good heavens! I, know. <sighs> I, know, I, I I failed you. I'm sorry. You didn't fail me. That's cool. I just am surprised. I just loved it so much. I, I thought you would have too. Uh, Gabe, where will you be trying to find things that upset me? I don't know where to find things that upset Jess, but I will be on Instagram as Gabe Infinity Watch. And you can also follow Omni Bros Live on Instagram as well. Omni Bros underscore live. Stay updated with all the news and updates and things like that that come around. I don't know. You you try and find things that uh, I'll hate. They just fall in my lap sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find me, Omnidog, at Omnidog's Vault on YouTube and Omnidog's underscore Vault on Instagram. Thank you for watching. Please uh, let's see. Please write a review for us on iTunes if you could. Mm -hmm. Listen to us on podcast there. Uh, Android, it is. What do they listen to, Gabe? Podcast Addict is the app. Podcast Addict is the Android uh, podcast app. You can listen to us on there. Uh, please um, hit the like button if you can. Please subscribe if you like us. Leave a comment and one of us will answer it. And tell and a couple of friends. Tell a couple of friends. That's right. Otherwise, peace and love. Peace and love. Thank you for watching and thank you for the chat. The chat was great tonight. Thank you to the viewers who watched us. We love you all and we appreciate you all. Thank you very much.